you're sitting in this audience, or if you're watching this video, then I'm certain that you have an ambition to get more out of life, no matter how much you've achieved. You want to find ways to give back to your community. You want to raise a great family. You want to have an impact in the world. You want a new job. You want to launch your own business. You want to leave a legacy. Maybe all of these. Today, I'm here to talk to you about one question you can ask yourself whenever you're making a decision to help you create the life that you want. My hope is that when you walk away from this talk, you'll feel inspired, but you'll also feel ready to live a more intentional and successful life. So for me, the first time I began to connect the ideas of taking action now to see an outcome later was when I was eight years old. In my school, having cool shoes was a really big deal. If you had some Nikes or some Reebok pumps, you were on top. Problem for me was, eight-year-old Mark, I didn't have cool shoes. So I was eight years old, I went to my parents and asked them to buy me some expensive shoes. Now we came from a lower income neighborhood, so their priority was really to put food on the table and a roof over our head. So that was a big no, but I really wanted cool shoes. So I got a job. Six days a week, I would deliver newspapers, every day after school and on Saturdays. Now I gotta be honest, it was rough. I mean, everybody else was out playing after school. In the winter, I was freezing cold. Back then, you had to collect money from people for their newspapers. So there I am, eight years old, going door to door and shaking people down for $5 a week. <laughs> I mean, they gave us this big blue cart to pull the papers in and had these big plastic wheels. I would make all this noise as we go down the street. So all the other kids would come around and they'd make fun of me. Sometimes they'd steal my car and run away with it. We had to call the police when they take my papers. It was rough, but I toughed it out. I kept delivering the papers. After a few months, I had some money in my pocket. So I asked my dad to bring me to the shoe store downtown. We went there, I went to the shelf, and I grabbed the most expensive pair of Nikes, and I bought them. I was feeling good. I'd earned these shoes, I wore them to school, I felt a little bit cooler. But looking back, what I learned from this experience was that there's always a way to get whatever you want in this world. You might just have to sacrifice on the way, and you have to realize it might take some time to get there. So now, I'm a consultant and a university instructor and entrepreneur. I do a lot of charitable work, and what I love about it is that I get to do what I want, and I get to do it my way. So I get approached all the time by people who are looking for insight on how to live a life that's more in alignment with their values. And there's always a gap. This is where you are now, this is where you want to be, and in between is what you have to do to get there. Now sometimes that in between is clear and sometimes it's not. If you need, know that you need a specific degree to get a specific job, the path is somewhat straightforward. You go out there, go in school, you work hard, you study, you graduate, you network, and you hustle your way into that job. But when we're talking about something as big as living a successful life, it's a little more ambiguous. There's so many complexities. Life moves so fast. We know that setting goals can help, but how do we make great decisions even though we don't have every element of our life and our future mapped out? For me, it's by regularly asking the one question that I promised you at the beginning of this talk. I ask myself this all the time. Five years from now, what decision will I wish I made today? If you go to work right now, and you're not inspired by your job, but you can't leave because you gotta pay the bills, five years from now, what decision will you wish you made today? You might not be able to leave your job today, but today, you can enroll in night class and start learning new skills and prepare yourself for a new career. Today, you could just update your LinkedIn profile so that when recruiters are looking for people with your skill sets, you'll pop up. Today, you could go out there and register a business online, start working on it, and maybe in a couple years, you can be your own boss. It works for small decisions too. If it's lunchtime, you can get a healthy salad or fried fast food. Now, of course, future you says, well, get the healthy salad, because if you keep it up, in five years, you look good, you feel healthy, everything's rocking. But part of you says, no big deal. What's one meal gonna do? You know, I think James Clear said it best in his book, Atomic Habits. 
He said, every action you take is a vote for the type of person that you want to become. Annie Dillard wrote, how we spend our days is how we spend our lives. What we do with this hour and that one, that's our life. If the person that you want to be five years from now is running a nonprofit or saved up enough money for a comfortable retirement or has raised great children, then that person would start doing those things today, not four years from now. If I talk to you about the type of person you want to be in five years, not one of you would say, I want to be the type of person who spends all day scrolling their phone, looking at social media. But why do we spend our time like that? And I think the trick is that little bit of time, that one hour, it seems so insignificant. And I think that's why it's important to remove ourselves from looking at a narrow box of an hour and look at a bigger span of something like five years of our lives. Think about this. You know that 20 hours you spent binge watching that series on Netflix? Imagine you spent 20 hours writing handwritten notes to everybody that's made an impact on you in your life. You could write 100 notes in 20 hours. Imagine how meaningful it would be to those people. Imagine how appreciated they'd feel. Imagine how much it would deepen your relationship with them. You know, networking guru Jordan Harbinger says, if you want to be able to rely on relationships in the future, you have to start cultivating them today. I talk to students about this all the time. Of course, it's important to study while you're in school, but just as important is to make sure you're getting out there, networking, connecting with people, learning what work is like in the real world, and making positive impressions. Here's why. When you're about to graduate and you see that dream job posted at the company you really want to work for, you're the one who can call up the person you met for coffee a year ago and get some extra insight and get a referral for an interview. But you can't do that after the job is already posted. You have to start planting the seeds now that you want to harvest later on. You know, in business, we say you can't always be working in your business, you also have to work on your business. When you're working in your business, you're doing the same thing day to day, and you're mostly going to stay in the same spot. When you're working on your business, you're creating a new vision and a new structure for you to grow and to evolve and to come in more alignment. When I was in my mid-20s, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. So I went back to school to do a master's in business administration at McMaster University. Now, even though I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, I had an idea that this was going to give me business skills, and I realized that almost everything is managed in some ways, from hotels to hospitals to banks to government. In other words, I told myself, even though I don't know the final destination, I'm pretty sure that in five years, this path will have set me up for success. That turned out to be correct. Less than a decade later, I completed my MBA, I'd had some great jobs, I started a business, and I found myself on a plane headed to Liberia. So for those of you who aren't as familiar, Liberia is a small country on the west coast of Africa. It's got a population of about five million people. Between 1989 and 2003, Liberia was devastated by two civil wars, which tore the country apart, physically and psychologically. Even as Liberia struggled to revive itself from these horrible experiences, Ebola struck in 2014 and 2015, and it overwhelmed the healthcare system that was already operating far past capacity. Now, during the war, a young boy fled the country. He managed to spend his teenage years on refugee camps in the Ivory Coast and in Ghana, and he was lucky enough to come to Canada as a government-sponsored refugee in his early 20s. His name was Leo Johnson, and we were connected by a mutual friend. Now, even though Leo was a refugee who had only been in the country for a few years himself, he was already trying to help others and actively organizing the community to get support for other newcomer youth in school and to help them succeed in life. And he also had a vision that one day he was going to go back to Liberia and find a way to help rebuild his country. So at this point, cool shoes weren't that big a deal for me anymore. I was looking for more meaning and more purpose in life. So I joined him. We created an organization called Empowerment Squared. Together with other volunteers, we spent thousands of hours in the community doing grassroots work and building the organization. And I was glad that years back, I'd chosen to go back and do my MBA at McMaster. Because now, with those business skills, I was putting them to use, building an organization that was going to change the world. So we became more and more successful. Leo was the executive director. I was the chair of the board. We began hiring paid staff. Soon we were helping hundreds of youth and families in Canada every single year 
with things like academic mentoring programs, free sports and recreation, scholarships to post-secondary education, and skills training for adult newcomers. So with the organization getting established in Canada, it was ready and it was time for us to turn our attention overseas. When I landed in Liberia for the first time, it was almost overwhelming. Here we were seeking to make change in a place that had no reliable supply of electricity or water, a completely broken education system, major sanitation issues, almost no access to health care, extreme poverty, low rates of literacy, every challenge you can think of. But we took this same philosophy that I've been talking to you about today and we brought it to our work in Liberia. We said, if we're gonna make a meaningful change in Liberia in five years and for decades to come, what do we need to do today? And how can we enlist others in this nation building work? So we hit the streets and the villages and the government offices and the slums. We connected with people like Daniel Henderson. Daniel is a Liberian who founded a nonprofit called Change for Liberian Children and Youth focused in Carysburg. We used the resources of my marketing company to help him to tell his story and expand their fundraising efforts. You can see in this picture here, one of our visits to Carysburg. We travel there and we hold leadership training workshops for members of the community to talk to them about the resources they do have, like arable land, tons of sunlight, and a resilient spirit, all of which can be combined to create the agricultural exports which can help generate economic value for the community. We work with people like Amma Harris. Amma's an entrepreneur. She founded a company called Exquisite, which imports products to the country that aren't currently there, and she's helping serve underserved local markets. She's a role model for other entrepreneurs across the country. This year, we broke ground on the Liberian Learning Center, a major project of Empowerment Squared. This is gonna have the country's first comprehensive post-war library and learning center. It's gonna have co-working spaces, business incubation programs, sports and recreation and event facilities. This is Yasa Lavala. Yasa returned to Liberia during the epicenter of the Ebola crisis and risked her life to work as a nurse on the front lines of the crisis. Today, She's about to graduate with her master's degree in public health from Harvard University. And right now, we're working with her on plans for massive transformation of Liberia's healthcare system. But we didn't stop in Liberia. We traveled to Ghana. We work as mentors with the YouthBridge Foundation. They host an event called the African Youth and Governance Conference, which brings together young leaders from across the continent and from across the world for intensive leadership training and discussions on how to create a brighter future for the continent. This is a picture of one of our annual pilgrimage to the Budaburam refugee camp in Ghana, the same refugee camp that Leo spent many of his teenage years at. We travel here because we're working with camp leadership and people living on the camp to find a way they can take concrete steps to safely repatriate themselves to Liberia after decades away from their home country. We went south. We traveled to the Royal Bafokeng Nation in South Africa and we hosted the Bafokeng Business Summit, where we brought together business owners from across the nation to identify opportunities to work together and to seek opportunities to pursue local and national markets. So at this point now, we've spoken to thousands of leaders, and we mentor people every day, especially young leaders, who have a belief that there's always a way to create a brighter future for themselves. Now, I'm sharing these examples because it's important to understand that no matter what your circumstances are or where you are in the world, this is possible. You can create capacity today and take steps today to create a brighter future for yourself, for your family, for your community, and even for your country. But I'm also sharing these examples to explain that the reason I have the privilege to do this type of work is because of decisions that I made in my past. It's those countless hours that I spent developing professional skills that have put me in a position to travel to these places and do work that has high impact and actually creates social and economic value. It's an intentional decision that I made years back to become a full-time entrepreneur that allows me the capacity to spend months at a time out of the country. It's late nights that I spend, basically every day after I finish my client work, working on strategy and marketing communications for Empowerment Squared to help push the organization forward and find ways to create more impact. 
It's all of these decisions put together over the years that have created the platform that I stand on to do my work today. Because here's the thing. You can't achieve the big things if you don't do the small things. Because the big things are just a set of small steps all put together. And the more small steps you take, the further you can go. But you can't take any steps if you're sitting on the couch. And I'm sure that future you doesn't want current you spending all your time on the couch today. And that's not to say that our future self is more important than our current self. It's just that we're living with our current self every moment, and we think about our future self a lot less. And that's why that five-year question is so important. Before I finish, I have to make an appeal. I started this talk by saying I wanted you inspired and ready to live a more intentional and successful life. But it's not all about you or me. We're all here together. Right now, this world is facing climate change, food insecurity, growing inequality, mental health crises, corruption, armed conflict, the list goes on. Now, I'm not here to be doom and gloom. There's so much innovation and beauty in the world as well. But what I am trying to say is that we have an incredible need for leadership in your family, in your community, and across every corner of this more interconnected world. So the decisions that you make today, they are important. If five years from now, you're healthy, you're more skilled and educated, you found passion and purpose, and you've identified ways that you want to bring about the change you want to see in the world, then you're empowered, and you're in a more powerful position to lead and to influence. We need you, and we need your ambition. So I can't wait to see you again in five years, hear what everything you've achieved, and see everything that you've become. Thank you. Thank you.